Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another lesson here on English Like a Native with me, your English teacher, Anna English. It's lovely to have you all here. Please do feel free to say hello and tell me where in the world you're watching from and what time is it? Here in London, it is 6 p.m. I've been filming all day, but I'm very happy to be finishing my working day off with you lovely people teaching you all about slang words. So today we're looking at British slang words, English slang words that are commonly used in the UK, beginning with the letter L. And as always, I've created a number of pages in my work notes that we're going to go through now and anyone who is generous enough to drop a super chat will have these notes as a way of saying thank you. And I also have the Skype patron room open. So patrons, hello, hello, Andreas, hello, Eric. Um, anyone else, any other patrons in the patron room, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to write them in there and I will answer you throughout the lesson. All right, so let's get started. Slang terms beginning with the letter L. So the first one here, you've probably seen it already, is the word laid back, laid back. Now laid back means easy going, quite relaxed. So if you are a laid back person, then you are a relaxed person. If you have a quite a, a relaxing day, quite a relaxing day, then you've had a laid back day. You could say that your work is quite laid back, it's quite relaxed. Um, and the example sentence I've given here is, I like to spend time with my family. They are really laid back and so I can kick back and relax. Now, if you're not sure what kick back means, we looked at that yesterday. Was it yesterday? No, it wasn't yesterday. We looked at that recently. So whenever we did the slang words beginning with K, then we looked at that. So if you missed that lesson, make sure you do catch up. We've covered every letter up to now, up to the letter L. So make sure you do go back and revise those other lessons. I talked to a student this morning during a lesson who watches most of these lessons and um, we were talking about how difficult it is to remember vocabulary that you've learned, especially the kind of vocabulary that you're learning in my lessons, like this one today. And the best way to remember vocabulary that's new to you is to make sure you revise the lesson a number of times. Now you have to have used um, a new word or phrase at least three times before your memory will hold on to it. And even after three times, it's still only going to hold on to it very gently. If you want a word to go into your long-term memory, and become part of your general vocabulary, then you have to revisit it around six or seven times. So I don't expect you to watch all my videos seven times, but it is important that even though you've watched a full lesson, that you go back a little later on and re-watch it or make notes and revisit your notes. Okay, so the next word on the list is lame, lame. To be lame, is to be bad or to be useless. Now, the expression you would normally hear with animals, for example, so if a horse is lame, if a horse is lame, it means it's hurt itself and it can't uh, walk or you can't ride the horse. So if you hear a horse is lame, it means the horse is useless at that time until it gets better. And we also use lame as a slang term to mean that something is just rubbish, useless unusable. And the example I've given here is, he gave me a lame excuse, a rubbish excuse, a useless excuse for being late to work this morning. He said it was because he thought he saw a spaceship on his driveway and so he was scared to leave the house. So this is a really bad excuse, right? I'm late for work because I thought I saw a spaceship on my driveway <laughs> and I was too scared to leave the house. So that's a really rubbish excuse. No one would believe that excuse and therefore it's useless. It's a lame excuse. A lame excuse. Sky says, I always make notes when you're teaching and sometimes after the lesson. Good, I'm glad you do. It's a really good habit to get into. If you're making notes, it's helping you to take the information on board. Okay, so the next one on the list is the word lass, lass. 
Now, lass means girl, but it's mostly used in the north of England or in Scotland. So it's definitely um, a Scottish word. At eight, lass. <laughs> Sorry, that's a terrible Scottish accent. Um, but lass means girl. So if you ever hear someone saying lass, they mean girl. So I saw that blonde lass at the shops today. So I was going to do that in my northern accent. I would say, I saw that blonde lass at the shops today. Yeah, I did. Or if I was trying to do a terrible Scottish accent, I'd do, uh, right, I saw that I saw that blonde lass at the shops today. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop. My accents are dreadful. Um, I'm also very tired. I've been filming all day. I've made five videos today. Lots and lots of filming. Okay, the next word on the list is the word later or laters. Now, obviously, you know the word later, but sometimes we use it just to mean goodbye. Later. Just in the same way as you'd say goodbye when you leave. Um, if I ever use it, I say laters with an S or a Z sound rather. It doesn't make sense. There's no particular reason why we would say laters. It's just a slang word. Bye, laters, laters. Okay, nice and easy. So, so far we've had laid back, relaxed, lame, useless. Uh, what else do we have? We had lass, girl, and laters. Okay, the next one is a good one. The next one is the phrase left, right and centre, left, right and centre, and it means all over, all over. So if I've lost my keys and I can't find them anywhere and you say to me, Anna, have you looked in all the possible places? And I say, I've looked, I have been looking for, I've been looking for them, if we're talking about my keys, let's change that. I've been looking for them left, right and centre. I've been looking for them left, right and centre. So I've been looking for them all over. Hello Harrison and everyone else in the chat room. It's lovely to see all of your names popping up, all the old regulars. Thank you for joining me. And Harrison says, I love what you've done with your hair today. Thank you. This is actually my wig hair. So I do my hair like this. So it's good to put a wig on top. You can pin the wig into it. But thank you for noticing. I'm glad you like it. Um, okay, so I've got another um, couple of patrons in here. Hello, Schwavek. Hello. Hello, uh, Leila. How are you? It's 1am in Taiwan. Oh, it's time to sleep because tomorrow I'll get up early. I'll see you in the next live lesson. Okay, Leila, go back to sleep. I don't want to disturb you. Okay, so left, right and centre. Keep that one in mind. The next word or phrase rather is leg it to leg it. Now, to leg it means to run away, to run away. So here's an example sentence. The teachers are coming. <gasps> Quick, leg it. So let's imagine that you have been doing something you shouldn't have been doing. Maybe you are skipping class or maybe you are, I don't know, um, doing graffiti, you're writing with pen on the wall and you shouldn't be, or you're smoking behind the bike shed. And someone says, oh, the teachers are coming, quick, leg it. And you run away. So leg it. Or you could say the, the students were seen legging it across the field away from the teachers. Okay. So the next one is one that you should definitely be aware of. And this is the word legit legit and it's short for legitimate and it basically means it's present, it's correct, it's legal, it's right, it's okay. So if I ask you if something is legit, am I, I'm asking you is it real, is it okay, is it safe, can I trust it, is it, is this okay, it's not stolen, it's not breaking the law, is it, is it fine, is it legit, is it legit. You can ask if a person is legit, meaning are they, are they true? Are they real? Are they lying to me? Are they tricking me? Are they legit? Um, and so, legit, the example sentence I've given here is, I have a few concerns. Is this contract legit? I have a few concerns. Is this contract legit? Okay, nice and easy. So the next one is the word limo limo. 
and it's short for the word limousine. Limousine is a car, a very posh car, and normally you'd see a stretch limousine, those really long cars, and it's normally for people with lots and lots of money. I don't think I've ever been in a limousine, actually. Um, but normally someone in the back has a glass of champagne and a fur coat, and they're just like, yeah, life is good. Yeah, a limo. So the example sentence I've given is, we are going to pick you up from the hotel in a limo. How nice. Okay, so here we go. The next one on the list is the word lip. Lip. Now, this is a lip and these are lips. However, sometimes we use this word as a slang word to mean talk back or to be rude to someone, to give them lip. Now, normally, this is what you would say about a child. A child gives lip to their parents um, or to grown-ups. You don't tend to use this word when describing uh, an adult. So, if a child gives you lip, they are talking back to you in a rude manner. They're being naughty and they should just be quiet and listen. So, here you go, lip to give lip, to talk back or be rude. And the example sentence I've given here, pretending I'm talking to my daughter, I've said, excuse me, young lady, don't you give your father lip? So my daughter's talking very rudely to her father. How dare she? Very disrespectful. And I've said, excuse me, young lady, don't you, talk, don't you give your father lip? Okay. And the next one on the list here is also similar to lip, it's lippy, lippy. So just like in the last example, you can use it as an adjective and say that someone is lippy. So my daughter here is being lippy and giving her father lip. But lippy is also short for lipstick, lipstick. So if I ask you, do I have any lippy on my teeth? I'm asking, do I have any lipstick on my teeth? Or I might say, I need to go and buy some new lippy. I've run out of lippy or something like that. Okay, so lippy, nice and easy. Oh, wonderful. So we have 138 people here watching. We nearly reached 200 yesterday. We were so close. We were at 199 viewers, which was amazing. I think probably close to one of our biggest lessons. I wonder, I wonder if we can smash 200 today. The only way we're going to do that is by you clicking that share button right now while I'm live. Click the share button, share it on Twitter or Facebook or whichever social network you're part of. And let's see if we can get those numbers up into the 200 space. Um, if you are new here, please make sure you subscribe. I go live as often as I can and release pre-recorded videos um, often as well. And so if you're trying to learn English, then please do subscribe and press the bell notification button so you know next time I'm live. And you guys know what to do. Make sure you press that like button before you leave me today. Okay, that number's going up, 143. Let's keep going, amazing. Um, okay, so the next one on the list, while you guys are sharing, I'll keep talking, is the word loaded. Loaded. To be loaded is to be very rich. So if you are loaded, you have a lot of money. And the example sentence I've given here is, I think that most footballers are loaded. I think that most footballers are loaded. Okay. Nice and easy, that one. Are you loaded? I'm certainly not loaded, but are you? I'm loaded with lots of teddies. <laughs> I'm very rich with teddies, as far as teddies go. Um, okay, 151 viewers, amazing. Let's keep that going. Keep, keep pushing that number up for me, because you guys are awesome, and I know you can do it. Okay, the next one is a term to describe someone who gives a loan, and that is a loan shark. But a loan shark is a very specific type of person. It's a person who gives a loan, but with very high interest rates. So I, if I was a loan shark, I would give you money, say I gave you a hundred pounds, but for that loan, you would have to repay me 200 pounds. That's crazy interest, right? Crazy, much more interest than you would pay at a bank. And that's probably because I'm a bit dodgy. I'm a little bit, 
maybe not not legit, perhaps. So um, a loan shark. And the example sentence I've given here is, they were desperate for cash. So they went to a loan shark as a last resort. They were desperate for cash. So they went to a loan shark as a last resort. Okay. Um, Harrison has just let me know that in American English, the word loaded can also mean that someone is high on drugs, particularly the drug cocaine. <gasps> okay. Um, I haven't heard that expression in the UK to mean high on drugs, um, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist here. I just, I, I haven't heard it. So maybe it's just an American thing, but thank you for sharing. Okay, so, oh, 155, we're moving on up. We're moving on up. Okay, so the next word is the word loco. Loco, if you are loco, you are crazy. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is a Spanish word. So any Spanish speakers here, can you let me know? I think loco is a Spanish word for crazy and I think we've just stolen it and used it as a slang word here. Um, so stay well away from him. He is loco. Stay well away from him. He is loco. He is crazy. Okay. So, um, nice and easy. Loco. The next one is the word loner. This is one that I hear a lot, actually. So a good one to remember. So loner means someone who prefers to be alone. Someone who prefers their own space. They prefer to be alone. And um, the example sentence I've given here is... I have always been a bit of a loner. I have always been a bit of a loner. Have you, are you a loner? Do you know any loners? I, I don't think I'm actually a loner. Although I'm alone right now. But with all of you, yay! 163 of you. We're so close. Let's push it up. Press share, press share. Let's get 200 of you in. 164, yay! Okay, um... So Jay has said, hi Anna, I arrived late today, but I am here. Boom. Thank you, Jay. You are awesome. I'm so glad that you made the time to pop in and say hello. And lots of you letting me know that loco is a Spanish word. So apologies if you are Spanish. We have stolen your word and we use it here in England as a slang term. It still has the same meaning though. So I guess thank you. Okay, so the next word is something you definitely need to know if you are coming to the UK, and it's the word loo. In fact, you need to know this even if you're just hosting or dealing with British or English people. Um, English people, British people. And the word loo means toilet or bathroom. So I, if I ask you, where is the loo? I'm asking where the bathroom is because I need the toilet. Um, or if I say, I'm just on the loo, Bear with me. It means I'm in the toilet. I'll be with you in a moment. <laughs> okay, so loo, loo. And the phrase I've used here is something you would probably hear and that is, do you mind if I just nip to the loo? Nip means to go very quickly. Do you mind if I just nip to the loo? I am bursting for a wee. <laughs> this means I'm desperate. I am bursting. I'm so desperate to wee. Okay, I'm bursting for a wee. <laughs> so there you go. A common a common phrase you might hear here. Common sentence. Do you mind if I just nip to the loo? I'm bursting for a wee. Okay. The next word is the word looker. To be a looker. Wow, he's a looker or she's a looker. Looker means good looking, attractive. So someone is good looking generally. And my example sentence is, have you met Henry? He is quite a looker. Have you met Henry? He's quite a looker. He's quite good looking. Oh, yes. Um, Harrison's also just brought up a very interesting point. Um, a loo is also sometimes referred to as simply ladies or gents. So I'm a lady, if I need to go to the bathroom, I would say to a waiter perhaps in a restaurant, excuse me, um, where are the ladies please? I'm not asking for actual ladies, I'm asking for the bathroom, the ladies bathroom. So where, where's the ladies? I'm just nipping to the ladies. So I'm just nipping to the toilet. And, uh, and also men would say, um, I need, the, could you tell me where the gents is? Where do I find the gents? 
and he means the gent's bathroom or the gent's toilet. Oh, we have 171, just 29 more people to hit that 200 mark. Will your friends be the friends that come and push me over that milestone? 172, <laughs> this is fun. All you have to do is press the share button, guys, and get that number up. All right, so um, looker, excellent. The next one is the word loon. And you could say that I'm a bit of a loon, someone who's a bit crazy. And you can also say that someone is loony. So you could say Anna is loony. Anna is crazy. She is a loon. So a loon is a noun and loony is the adjective. There are many loons in the loony bin. There are many loons in the loony bin. Now, loony bin is a word for, or phrase for a mental hospital. So a hospital that's for mentally ill patients. Um, it's not nice, I guess, to use the phrase loony bin, but if you do hear it, then it means a hospital for crazy people, or sorry, for mentally ill people. Okay. Um, so I would be very careful using this. Um, but if anyone uses it with you, you know what it means. Okie dokie. So, um, loopy, another way that you can describe me. I am a loon, I'm loony, and I'm also loopy. So loopy is similarly, it's like crazy, but it's, it's more like a bit eccentric, to be a, a bit eccentric. So the example sentence I've given here is, Anna English is always a little loopy, but she seems to have gone totally loopy today. Anna English is always a little loopy, but she seems to have gone totally loopy today. I definitely need more sleep. I think um, sleep deprivation makes me a little bit loopy. Crazy and eccentric. Um, all right, so one of you has mentioned WC, which I will bring up quickly here because it came up in a lesson yesterday as well. Um, we don't say WC here in the UK, so I won't say I'm going to use the WC or could you tell me where the WC is? And we don't even use the extended version, which is water closet. This means bathroom, if you don't know. It's another way of um, describing a toilet, a WC. However, we do understand that WC means toilet. So I, I imagine all British people know WC, toilet, but we never say it. We only ever see it written down. Patrons, what are you saying? J, um, Eric, can we say Lou or Lucy? went to the loo. Okay, so Lucy, you, you mean the name Lucy, went, so you're talking about a short version of the name Lucy, so Lucy Lou, it would be spelled like that, I think, Lou, or short for Louise, you've got Lou, short for Louise, Lou went to the loo, yes, you could say Lou uh, went to the loo, like that, Lou went to the loo, Lou went to the loo. <laughs> Silly. Okay. Um, restroom. No, Americans use restroom. British English don't use the word restroom for toilet. Oh, I could do a whole lesson on toilets, couldn't I? Okay. The next one um, is the word loudmouth. Loudmouth. If someone is a loudmouth, it's an obnoxious person who talks a lot. So it's not nice to be a loudmouth an obnoxious person who talks a lot. Um, usually they're being quite loud. And the example sentence I've given here is, the teacher told Harry off. So to tell someone off is to shout at them. The teacher told Harry off for talking, but it didn't stop him from being a loud mouth. So obviously Harry is generally a loud mouth. He's very loud and obnoxious. And one day the teacher tells him off for talking, but it didn't stop him from being a loud mouth. Excellent, good. Okay. Um, so the next word is the word lousy, lousy. Now I have a feeling that lousy may have come from American English, but we do use it here and we do know it. Um, it's, it's used often. Um, lousy means bad or rubbish. And normally you'd say like you feel lousy or someone is lousy. Um, I've had a lousy day, you might say. And so the example sentence I've given here is, that man is selfish and lazy. He would make a lousy husband. 
That man is selfish and lazy. He would make a lousy husband. Oh dear. Okie dokie, we only have a few more to go, just four more to go. Now the next one's quite fun and um, most teenagers would know this word or phrase rather and it's the phrase love bite, a love bite. To get a love bite, also known as a hickey, a hickey. Uh, and this is a bruise that's given to you by your boyfriend or girlfriend and it's created by them sucking on your neck really hard. So if your boyfriend or girlfriend puts their mouth to your neck and sucks really hard, they will create a bruise. And this is called a love bite or a hickey. And the example sentence I've given here is, I cannot believe at 25 years old, you are turning up to work covered in love bites. I cannot believe at 25 years old, you are turning up to work covered in love bites. So love bites is definitely something that is, um, in the UK anyway, something that teenagers tend to do. Um, as you grow older, it's like, don't mark me, don't leave bruises on me. I have to go to work, it doesn't look good. Thank you very much. Um, yes, okay, so the next one is a really good one to know and that's the word lurgy, lurgy. I have the lurgy. It sounds horrible, doesn't it? If you have the lurgy, it means that you are ill or you are sick. Um, if you have a cold or the flu or you have a stomach bug, you've got the lurgy. And so I might say to you, don't come near me, I've got the lurgy. Don't come near me, I've got the lurgy. <laughs> Luckily, I haven't got the lurgy. Um, and if you have the lurgy, I'm very sorry and I hope you get better soon. Okay, two more to go, guys. Two more to go. Um, Eric, you've shared a song, a link to a song here. I can't, I can't play it live here now because I don't know what the content is, um, but I'll have a look later. The next word is the word lush, lush. And lush means very nice, very nice. So if something is very nice, you'd say that's lush. Now, lush is more common in the West Country, which is kind of like southwest of England. Um, but anyone around the world, <laughs> around the world, around the country will know, or around the nation will know what lush means. Um, and the example sentence I've given here is, yesterday was sunny and warm, it was lush. Yesterday was sunny and warm, it was lush. So it was a lovely day, it was very nice. Now, the very last one is my absolute favorite. And if you like this one, then I would ask you to please make sure you do also give a thumb up if you haven't already. Um, and maybe try to use this word with your friends because it's a great phrase. And it's the phrase, lovely jubbly. Ah, oh, lovely jubbly. <laughs> and it means lovely. It's just a fun way of saying lovely. So lovely jubbly, lovely jubbly. Um, and all I've said here is the truth, which is you guys are lovely jubbly. You guys are lovely jubbly. Um, usually it's actually used when um, I'm affirming that I'm happy with the plans. So if you say, um, I'll come around tomorrow for breakfast at eight o'clock and I go, lovely jubbly, sounds great. Lovely, lovely jubbly. So if you like that, then give it a thumb up and um, make sure that you share it and try to use it. And Caleb says, this lesson is amazeballs. You definitely have been watching my slang lessons. Well done. Yes, thank you very much. I'm glad you think so. Um, lots of people talking about my birthday and my age. What's going on? <laughs> I am not 36 yet. I'm 